System design is a critical topic for any software developer. Focusing in on iOS and mobile, it's more important than ever before. A comment and question that I get very frequently is to do some material on system design. So this is the first video of many to come where I'm going to be talking exclusively about system design as a concept, as well as how to prepare for it for a upcoming interview. In this video in particular, we're going to focus on two resources. One is a way where you can actually practice your system designing skills and actually mock out a virtual whiteboard. And the other is a resource where you can actually see somebody go through a live system design interview where you can see the bits and pieces, the diagrams, trade-offs, considerations, all the important facets of a system design interview. So that all said, start by dropping a like down below. Let me jump on over to my screen and let's go through these two resources. Now, the very first resource I wanna share with you guys is a website called Acceladraw.com. You might be familiar with varying other whiteboard tools, but this one has two things going for it. A, it's free. You can just go to the website, no account needed, and just start drawing and mocking things out. And B, I happen to know this is actually what a lot of companies are using these days. Uh, let's say there is a company that rhymes with beta that actually uses this in their interview loops. So it's a really good resource to familiarize yourself with. The you know disclaimer here is companies change the tools they use, so you should you know be comfortable with the tool but not rely on it solely. So let's actually go through it very briefly. So first things first, at the top here we've got some tools. We've got a pointer to move things around. We've got this tool to draw squares. And this is basically where you're gonna spend the bulk of your time when you're actually designing things. You're gonna create various components. You're gonna actually click in it and you're gonna perhaps title them. So let's say this guy here is a view model and we wanna actually show, let's say how some type of application works. Maybe here we have, I don't know, a controller. And the point of this tool is you don't need to have like a beautiful drawing here. The point is to be able to diagram out the design that you have in your mind as well as connect these boxes to show data flow as well as relationships. So for example, let's say we have our actual view here and we want to actually model out, well, how does a view get its data or how, do the, how does the view's interaction actually get back and vended to our controller? And you can see right here we have some handy dandy arrows and we can actually go ahead and, and draw these here. So let me go ahead and add an arrow. Sometimes a tool is a little finicky and it takes a little bit of getting used to. But I digress, it is pretty helpful. In this case, there we have it, there is a arrow. And again, uh, one thing I wanna stress is, when you use this and just practice going through and you know talking to yourself, frankly, about the various components and explaining them, don't focus too much on the design. Make sure your design is somewhat understandable in terms of arrows, but be very communicative and clear in your actual explanation. Think of the design here in the diagram as a resource and as a nice piece to look at while you're talking through your solution. So that is resource number one, Acceladraw, link will be in the description below. The second resource is where we'll spend the most of our time in this video, and that is this GitHub page for a mobile system design framework. Now, this is put together by uh, one person in particular who started it, and a variety of folks have contributed to it, uh, since then, and it basically goes through a variety of topics and diagrams for a system design interview focusing on mobile. Now notice this as mobile and not iOS. You should be able to abstract out iOS specific concepts, but let's go through it together and let's talk through some of the pieces. Now bear in mind this is a primer video, so I don't want to get too far deep into each of these areas, but I plan to do a follow up for each focused area. So this readme here basically shows a, a process of the system design interview to design a Twitter feed. So first and foremost, we have a section for defining the task. This is how you would actually start out your interview, of course, after acquaintances and all, all of the introductions and whatnot that I won't waste any time with. And defining the task is arguably one of the most important, if not the most important parts of this type of interview. What the interviewer is really looking for here is the signal that you asked clarifying questions. You've scoped out your design. How many users are we supporting? What markets are those users in? Gathering basically the requirements is what it boils down to. And there's three types of requirements. First, we have functional requirements. And these are the actual things, as the name implies, that need to be able to work end-to-end -to -end and be functional. 
Then there's non-functional requirements, things like offline support, real-time notifications, optimal bandwidth and CPU usage, so on and so forth, things that are nice to have, but perhaps a little out of scope for your interview. It's really good to call these out just so your interviewer knows or whoever you're discussing with that, you know, you've thought about these. They're definitely not an afterthought to you, but in your discussion today, you're going to focus on one thing. And the third thing here is out of scope, right? So out of scope should be fairly self-explanatory. If you're designing the Twitter feed, your interviewer probably doesn't care to know, like, okay, how does authentication work or OAuth? It's probably good to call out that you need to have like a token and you need to have, you know, a capability to send tweets in this particular example, all the peripheral services, but you're not going to actually design these. So moving on from actually uh, the requirements, and what, one thing I'll mention is each of these sections has the signal aspect and this is what the interview is re interviewer is really looking for so in this case um, you know what assumptions did you make what features uh, did you actually choose to build out in your design what questions did you ask and this is kind of good to see as an as a candidate because you can see the thought process generally of course of interviewers and what they're looking for so moving on to the next section we have clarifying questions here I'm going to gloss over this the first thing that you want to do, and this is a little subjective too, but I've found that this is a good practice for most folks, is start off high level. Now, there's a lot of aspects of designing the Twitter feed in your iOS app or mobile app, but you might want to start off with the high level diagram and then dive deeper into the area that you think is most interesting based on your discussion. So in this diagram, one thing that a lot of folks will ask questions about is, well, hey, I see some components here like a backend and a server and a CDN. What gives? This is iOS and mobile. We're not backend engineers. And the one thing that I'll mention is, while you don't need to have the most, uh, you know, in-depth knowledge about backend and things like sharding and replication or redundancy, it is expected at a lot of companies to know that, you know, the server isn't just magic, magical, right? Like there are trade-offs of, you know, having a CDN, how does your API gateway work? Are you using GraphQL? Are you using REST APIs? You know, are you assuming there's a caching layer, so on and so forth? So there is an expectation to at least understand the boundary here between backend and your front end, which will be your mobile client. Now, diving deeper into this mobile client, we see things like a API service, a repository, a persistence layer. We see a dependency injection graph here. So a lot of key components that every single application, especially at scale, is prone to have at some points. We also see things that are specific to you know, the Twitter app, so the tweet feed flow. We see a tweet detail flow, and then we see a coordinator between them. So let's continue on here, and we're going to go through basically um, a list of each of these components. I'm not going to read through them. It's linked down below. But the signal here for this section is really that you understand the various components that are needed, the isolated responsibility, the single responsibility of each of those components, as well as the actual data flow and how things interact with one another. So one thing I glossed over that's very important here is the actual arrows. What direction are they connected in? Are they bi-directional like the backend here with our API service or are they unidirectional where the arrow goes in one direction only? So moving on to the next section, we're going to do a deep dive into the tweet feed flow. So this is presumably, you know, what you discussed with your interviewer and this is what you want to focus on. Here we have an even more in-depth diagram specifically talking about the tweet feed flow. So it's kind of your Twitter feed. In this case, you'll see there is a notion of a feed view model. We're going to be addressing pagination, which is something we should have identified. So we have something called a pager here. We have a tweet like user case, a tweet detail user case, presumably if we want to like the tweet or tap into it to see details. We have a dedicated object to provide images. So the, the point of this is, and I'll focus on the image loader here, is you're really thinking about designing an app at scale, right? Can you actually have your controller or you know the UI call into a view model to load the image from a URL? Absolutely, it still works. But having an image loader object specifically that's responsible for that opens the doors for better design. So once again, continuing here, we'll have the components listed out as well as the signal section. So things like the candidate is familiar with you know, common patterns, the candidate is familiar with business logic and UI logic separation, et cetera, et cetera. One thing that I'll touch on in terms of the, you know, the taboo word of architecture here is we'll notice we have a view model. But a lot, of, a lot of candidates will kind of go down the route of, you know, pick an architecture. Oh, I'm going to pick MVVM and I'm going to pick it because it's perfect. 
right? One thing you'll notice on this diagram is there's a lot more going on here other than a model, a view model, a view, and a controller, right? So when you pick one of those architectures, you want to communicate very well that you know that this is, you know, an acronym, it's a pretty well-established architecture, but there are these peripheral objects, like once again, this image loader that you're gonna need to make things functional. So continuing along here to our next section, we're gonna gloss over these FAQs. We'll go to API design. Now this is also really important. It's important to know the various options you have so you can actually pick one and justify your choice. So in this case, we care about having an API to get you know real-time tweets in our feed. So we see options here like push notifications. Basically, we're gonna update whenever we get a push, right? There's pros and cons to both. They're easy, con, they go through Apple. Similarly, there's HTTP polling, right? We're gonna make an API call every minute, perhaps. Pretty expensive to our server, right? Because we're making API calls. And there's things like server-side events, then there's WebSockets, et cetera, et cetera. Point is, you should know the options and you should know the various trade-offs. Similarly, with actual protocols of making these requests, there's things like REST and GraphQL. One thing I'll call out here is if you know that a certain company is already using one of these paradigms, it's good to understand why and it's good to prepare ahead of time. For example, Facebook is known to use GraphQL very heavily. The reason they do that is because REST APIs would uh, enforce them to make further calls upstream, whereas GraphQL gives them a lot of flexibility to query various pieces of data, given that their data graph is enormous on their backend. So you should know that none of these solutions are perfect, right? We'll, we'll see a pro and con section in each of them. So I encourage everyone to read through this and familiarize yourself. It's okay if you're not familiar with everything, but it's important that you actually acknowledge that there are choices. So moving on to the pagination section, once again, same deal here. You can do offset-based pagination, key set-based, cursor-based. I encourage you to read through it and figure out what the pros and cons are and really have these in your tool belts when this question inevitably comes up. So let's see, what else do we down, have down here? We have providing signal. So once again, candidates aware of challenges related to poor network conditions and expensive traffic. This is very important when you're building and designing for scale. Just because something is functional and work does, works does not mean it's a good design. The term good design is very subjective based on the business goals and the type of application you're making. So just make sure to go through this. So moving on to the data storage section, we have various storage options, of course, like user defaults, key value store. We have things like actual databases, an object relational map like core data. We have things like actual binary data like NS coding as well as codable. And then things like on-device storage that's secure like uh, keychain. Now, obviously, each of these different types of storage mechanisms is used and intended for a different case. And you should also be mindful of various you know, peripheral concerns, things like threading and things like atomically accessing objects, as well as where that data is actually saved. Is it something that the user can access like the documents directory? Is it something like the temporary directory where it'll be, you know, cleared up like cache data? So you should be mindful of not only the choice you're making and don't just go for the thing that, you know, you're most comfortable with, go for the thing that meets the needs of what you're designing. So moving on here, we're almost done. We're at best practices and approach of the actual uh, data storage section. So here's the signal. Candidates aware of you know, various mobile storage types, security, limitations, and compatibility, uh, as well as the various use cases and scenarios. Now this is basically the topics that this document here goes in depth with. Now there's a section down here for additional topics. You'll notice it's fairly lengthy within its own right. And the reason for that is this is a work in progress uh, document, but I at least want to just skim through these really quickly. From the mobile perspective, of course, security and data privacy are extremely important, especially nowadays more than ever. You know, targeting platform changes, whether it's Android or iOS, and you want to have something in iOS 14, how you're going to think about backwards compatibility. Performance and stability are huge. Thinking about things like um, you know, how you're going to actually meter and rate limit data usage, bandwidth, CPU, battery life, uh, bootstrapping, otherwise known as startup time, how you're going to manage memory, right? We build small apps with assumptions of, you know, like this stuff just kind of works. But when you're designing large scale applications, it's critical that you think about most of these elements. One thing I'll mention before I wrap up here is it is understood in discussions and system design interviews, whether you're doing it with a colleague or as a you know candidate in an interview is you have about an hour. So you need to be mindful of, you know, how 
deep you go into these areas as well as your breadth of explanation. So that's the reason that most folks are encouraged to go pretty wide with uh, you know this diagram here. And once you actually understand that, okay, your interviewer wants to talk about the tweet feed flow, you can you know, drill down deeper and deeper. It's great to go wider before you start to go deeper uh, in terms of your explanations so you can optimize on the thing that the interviewer cares about or your colleague you know, in a work setting. So that is all I've got for you guys today. Hopefully a pretty quick primer. I'm gonna share both of these links down below. And I plan to do a couple of actual mock system design videos here using Acceladraw where we'll actually design out things like the Instagram feed or Snapchat stories or any other types of apps that you guys are interested to see. I think those are pretty popular, well-known apps, which is why they came to mind. Let me know in the comments down below if you have something particular you'd like to see as well as if you have any suggestions for a system design that I haven't covered here. So if you haven't done so already, drop a like down below, hit subscribe if you want to stay tuned, hit that bell icon to be notified when new videos go up. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next one.